So today we're gonna to look at sizing an off-grid solar system. So this is assuming you've got solar panels, charge controller, battery, and an inverter, as well as some DC appliances. So what we've got here is this calculator from Alti. We've got some stuff pre-filled in. So we've got like a 5,000 BTU air conditioner, a couple laptops, an exhaust fan that's running on DC, not AC and some LEDs in the cabin that run on DC. So say we wanted to add another load and we're not sure how many watts it takes. We can do this little drop down here and say, let's do a coffee pot, uh, coffee maker. That would, so that would be like a drip coffee maker, right? 800 watts. So let's add that load, coffee maker. We're gonna do one of those. And so we'll do 800 watts. And how many hours is it gonna be on a day? Um, I mean, if it takes, you know, 10 minutes. Nope. <laughs> um, let's say 0.2 hours for the day. So only a whole total of 160 watt hours a day. You'll see that a lot of um, devices that you're only using for a little bit really don't take that much energy over the course of the day. But let's do another one like an Instapot. And let's do a quantity of one. Those take about a thousand watts. And let's say it's on for an hour during the day. So that gets us a total here. So this is the total watt hours per day. We'll use that in just a minute. One thing we need to look at down here is if you're sizing an off-grid system, how big your inverter needs to be. And this here shows that our inverter needs to be at least 2,420 watts with a surge capacity of 2,820. Now, why are those two numbers different? So things that are resistive in nature, so like an Instapot that's just using resistive heat or a coffee maker that's using resistive heat. Those are just straight up, that's how many watts you need. Those don't surge above the watts needed to run the device. But if you're looking at an air conditioner that's a motor and that takes more power to start than it does to run. And so I put the surge uh, wattage in here, which that may or may not be correct but you can find some data from other people of, okay, I've got this air conditioner, how much surge capacity do I need? I know that with a 1500 watt, good quality, pure sine wave inverter, I can start a 1000 watt air conditioner on that 1500 watt inverter. So this would certainly be fine on a 1500, 1000 watt even uh, inverter for this air conditioner. Now, one thing this doesn't take into account is how many appliances you're willing to run at once. This is assuming you're running them all at once, probably over planning a little bit because you don't necessarily need your coffee maker, your Instapot and your air conditioner running at the same time. You could probably, you know, drop one of those off, go with a 1500 watt inverter and you would be okay. And that, of course, that's all personal preference. So now let's go on to the next page and we're gonna take our total watt hours per day here and we're gonna plug that into this box right here. And then that's step one, um, how much energy we're gonna use during the day. So step two is how many days should your system run without sun? If you do a one here, then it assumes that anything from the previous evening after the sun went down, anything that you used, you will then recharge the next day on solar or on generator. And that's the that's the least expensive option is to assume that 95% of the time you'll be able to recharge on solar and that 5% of the time you can fire up the generator and recharge your batteries that way. If you wanna go completely solar and you don't ever wanna to have to have generator, you probably you have at least two options. One option is to oversize the solar and the batteries enough so that if you end up with three days of clouds, then you'll still be able to glide through those three days. And then as the sun comes back out later, then you'll be able to recharge. The other way would be to sacrifice your own um, living, which would be, you know, not making coffee that day. And for some people that would be a horrible thing. So you'll just have to decide how many days worth of battery capacity and solar charging you need to account for. So step three is the temperature of the battery bank. I'm just gonna assume 70 degrees Fahrenheit that these batteries are gonna be temperature controlled and that that'll be okay. All right, so this is showing a 19.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to 48 volt. I feel like a system this size should go ahead and go 48 volt because it's probably gonna grow in the future anyway. And you'll notice that this is a much larger number than the number that we brought over from the worksheet. And that's because of two things. One is that this doesn't account for inverter efficiency. Most inverters, you know, under the $1,000 range are gonna be 85 to 90% efficient. 
So you're gonna have a, a 10 to 15 percent loss that you're gonna have to account for where this is how much power your appliance is drawing, but as it's coming out of the battery, it's more power than that because the inverter is losing some to heat and efficiencies. In addition to that, this website is accounting for a 50% discharge on the batteries in order to extend the life of the batteries. And that's recommended for any flooded lead acid battery that I've seen. I've seen some AGMs that say you could maybe go down to like 70% discharge. And if you go lithium iron phosphate, you know, you could go down to maybe an 80%. So you can adjust that number accordingly. If this is at 50%, then 80% might be like 12 kilowatt hours that you would need. And we're gonna assume a lithium iron phosphate battery for our calculations today. So we'll probably go with more like a 12 kilowatt hour battery size needed. The next thing is your solar panel and solar charge controller sizing. This is gonna be dependent, of course, on where you're at. You'll notice that Fairbanks, Alaska, you get about 0.3 sun hours on average. Um, let's go down to, say, Waco, Texas. Waco, Texas is 4.1 sun hours, and that's a much more reasonable number. And this shows that we need 2.63 kilowatts worth of solar in order to recharge our battery bank for the next day. Now you'll notice that this number, so if we go up here to how many days should your system run without sun, I change that to two, let's see what changes. You'll notice that the battery bank capacity changed by two X, but the solar panel charge controller actually did not change. That's interesting. I think I would have done more panels if I was doing this calculator, but that's up to you. That's where, that's where you really need to understand what's happening in the background here. If you've got a larger battery bank, in order to go, glide past a couple of days of no sun, I think I'd want a slightly larger solar array so that if you did go two days without sun, you'd be able to charge it up over the next two days. If you didn't have any more panels, then it wouldn't necessarily catch up. Anyway, so we're gonna go with 2.63 kilowatts because we're assuming that we'll recharge the following day. Now we need to put in how many watts our panels are. We're gonna go with a 395 watt panel. Right now, if you're buying a 39 by 79 inch size panel, that's those uh, uh, 72 full size cells, um, th that's about the right wattage. You can get some up to about 430 watts, I think. And if you get the, the brand new bifacial where it has solar cells on both sides and you've got like a ground mount system, I think you can get up to the 480, 500 watt range for that size of panel. But anyway, at 395 watts, you're gonna need seven of those panels for a total of 2.76 kilowatts. And so that overshoots the 2.63 by a little bit, which is fine. And then it says here that you're gonna need 58 amps on your solar charge controller. So that gets us our numbers to be able to then go plug some things in and see what kind of products we need. So let's bring up our spreadsheet here and let's go through this. So if we have 395 watt solar panels and we've got seven of them and we've got an inverter. So say we did an Ames 1500 watt inverter. Now this is something, this is a product that I have used before. It has worked well. So this one's $286. And this is just an inverter. This doesn't have a charge controller built in. This inverter can start my 12,000 BTU air conditioner. It'll even run my 5,000 at the same time if I start them in the right order. Anyway, so it's a very capable inverter. So let's do that. The next thing we're looking at is a charge controller, a 60 amp charge controller. And we could do something like the, the Palmister 60 amp would be about $100 and that would give us enough capacity for those panels. Also, something to think about too, that's an odd number of panels is seven. Really, we'd probably go with eight because you're probably gonna be doing two in series or, th or three in series. Eight, you could do two in series, four parallel and get you a reasonable number into the charge controller. That is gonna be maxing out the charge controller. So I would consider just going with two and splitting the load between two charge controllers. But we'll also talk about that in just a minute with an option for combining this inverter and charge controller into one unit. So the battery <clears throat> is going to be the last piece here. Something that I would recommend for a system this large is to go get some lithium iron phosphate cells from Alibaba. You'll see that these here are priced, if you're buying 240 amp hour cells, at $75 a piece. We have 75 and we have 16 of them. 
that's twelve hundred dollars and you're gonna do you're probably not gonna do air shipping on these you're gonna do sea shipping so you're gonna wait 30 to 45 days to get these in but and that's gonna cost you an extra 400 bucks or so so you're talking about about a hundred bucks a battery and you could probably get it down a little bit lower than that you can talk to the talk to the seller and see what the shipping would be to you you'd be able to get it shipped to a distribution center near you instead of to your house I don't know anyway the capacity on these, so these are 3.2 volt nominal, and they are, what, 240 amp hours a piece. So you've got 768 watt hours per cell, and 16 of those. So that gets you a 12.28 kilowatt hour battery pack, which lines up nicely with our calculations, where with a lead acid, we needed about 19 kilowatt hours. But if we're, if we're able to go down to a 70 or 80% discharge, then 12 kilowatt hours would be fine. So that's where I got the numbers here for our battery. Because in addition to the cells, you're going to need your BMS, right? So you probably want to get something like a, a, I just go with like a 300 amp BMS just to oversize the BMS. It'll be a smart BMS. So then you can go into the settings and set the max discharge to whatever your inverter needs. And then that'll be able to protect your wiring and any short circuit events that happen but if we're looking at $75 a piece at 16 plus another 400 for shipping or so, and then you got another hundred bucks for a BMS, so you're even under that 1900 number probably in order to get your 240 amp hour battery pack. And those are pretty easy to put together. They're just bolts in the top with bus bars and they come with the bus bars for you to be able to put them together. So we're looking at a price of about $3,700 and you've got some miscellaneous wires and fuses and breakers that you're gonna wanna put into that system to make it safe. And something else that you could consider is instead of this inverter charge controller duo that's gonna cost you, what, 430 bucks, is you could do something that's an all-in-one unit uh, like this. So this is a grow watt, 48 volt, 3000 watt inverter. Now it says split phase up here, don't let that fool you. This provides 110 volts, just like the Ames inverter. This is just 110 volts. The advantage with the grow watt is that if you ever did want to go 240 volts, have that split phase, you can take another one of these grow watts and set it up in parallel and set them up to communicate and they will do 240 volt split phase and it, oh, so it'll have the two 110 volt circuits and then you could go across them to get 240 volts which is a beautiful thing um, you can do up to six of these units together so that's what 18 kilowatts worth of inverting you could also do if you just want to stay with 110 volts or 120 volts you can do them in parallel not split phase and just have a six kilowatt inverter with two of them so it gives you some flexibility with how much inverting power that you have and then also it has an 80 amp charge controller built in as opposed to the 60 amp that I specced earlier in the Palmister. And this also has like Wi-Fi monitoring. And so it's just a, a nicer unit in that way. So you would plug the solar panels into this unit. And then from this unit, you could go out to your breaker box to power all of your 110 volt devices. And then of course your battery plugs into the bottom of this unit. And it is a little bit more expensive. So you're talking about, you know, $816 here as opposed to the, what, $430 for the two individual items. But it gives you some more expandability if you do something like this, which is funny to say when you've got an all-in-one unit versus the different components. Cause usually if you've got individual components, it's more expandable in that way. And I guess in some ways it is, but with this one, you can add on instead of having to replace. Now I say that with a Palmister 60 amp charge controller, you could have two or three of those set up in parallel and, and just keep adding panels and send it all to the battery. But with this, you can add the inverting capacity, which is something you definitely don't have the option for with this inverter. So you spend 300 bucks or so on this inverter. And if you ever need more than that 1500 watts, then you need to go upgrade your inverter. So you gotta rip this one out and put a different one in, which would get costly really quickly. So I, I'm liking the uh, flexibility of these grow watt inverters. And I know that there's some others like the MPP solar, which people like, which seems like a very similar unit. So there we have it. Just a quick overview on how to calculate what 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 you need to look for in products right because as soon as you know units and 
see if that's actually going to power what you need to power. Anyway, let me know if this was helpful for you. Post down in the comments if you've got some other questions that I didn't cover. I'm also interested in doing some of these live maybe. So if you're interested in submitting your load calculations and then us kind of walking through some of the options for parts to, to build your system, you know, throw that down in the description. Maybe we can do that soon. I'll see you guys next time here on Bean Energy.